We have covered along this week uh, some of the more fundamental concepts of a general chemistry course, such as uh, acid base and redox reaction, but we have established a relationship uh, with the periodic table. Uh, in your opinion, is it easier uh, for you now to establish trends in a period or, or group uh, regarding these important properties? Yeah, definitely. Now I can understand the importance to locate correctly an element within the periodic table. I've also learned how the more electropositive elements are located in the left side of the table tends to form a basic species, while for elements on the right side increases its acidic behavior. It is really interesting to know that if we have an alkaline metal oxide it would be basic in water, uh, while oxides from non-metal elements are the anhydride of the corresponding acid. We have seen similar trends for oxidation states. Metallic elements tend to act as oxidizing agents, while non-metallic elements have a wide variety of oxidation states. And when they are combined uh, in high oxidation states, they tend to oxidize. Well, it is really curious how these trends are gradually modified uh, along a period. For example, in the left side, we find metals with basic character and the next element in the row would be less basic, until a point in the middle where you find the amphotheric behavior. Finally, at the end of the period, you find acid characteristics. And same thing can be applied to redox properties. Mm -hmm. If we examine a column in the P block of the periodic table, the uh, elements uh, located below we prefer the lower oxidation states. And the good thing is that it, it can be easily visualized in a diagram. With respect to um, the presented diagrams, did you find them useful? What diagram do you think describes clearly the redox properties? Regarding the diagrams, I think all of them are really useful since they allow you to determine the stability or the oxidation state of a compound really quickly and they give you a better understanding of the redox chemistry. I think those diagrams are a really useful tool. In my opinion, these diagrams are which give the clear, in, uh, clear qualitative insight about oxidation states. Yeah, you're right, but Latimer diagram allow you to know directly the reduction pot potential of a redox couple. Um, in frost diagram, you read data um, of Gibbs energy, and sometimes it is difficult to make calculations. From my point of view, Ellingham diagrams are really powerful tools, because you can easily devise a method to obtain a pure metal. Uh, in a quick look, you can see which elements are easy to reduce and which not. Do you expect that all the knowledge you have learned during this week will be useful for the rest of the course? I'm completely sure because in order to predict an element behavior in a reaction, it is really important to know the acid base and redox properties. Or for understanding the source of the elements and how they can be found from Earth. Some of them are found are silicates, are oxides, sulfides, and so on. If you remember, in this week we have learned uh, to predict which elements combine preferably with others. You're right, the hard soft acid base concepts, they are really important, aren't they? Definitely, and with Ellingham diagrams we can evisage additionally how we can obtain the pure metal from the ore.